flight sim. Once the preserve of the PC gamer is now seeing a small resurgence on consoles, with titles such as Ace Combat bringing flight simulation and combat together in a big mix of propellers, guns and explosions. The latest of these is Damage Inc, and it comes with a rather nifty joystick. Is this a game made just to show off the peripheral though? Or does Damage Inc have enough firepower to separate itself from the rest of the squadron? Let's find out as we take to the skies for our review. There are fish are underwater. Our ships are as good as gone. Damage Inc. is set around the battle for air supremacy over the Pacific during World War II. Piloting various fighters and bombers, you have an impressive 12 hours of campaign missions to play through. It's just a shame that there isn't really anything to keep you interested for all those hours. The missions inevitably involve either protecting this or bombing that, and most of the time you just have to fly around shooting down planes that apparently have no interest in shooting back at you. Using the joystick does make Damage Inc. a lot more playable than it should be. It's responsive, well-built, and it looks great. Its focus is supposed to be on realism and authentic dogfights. However, it seems that you can pull any maneuver that takes your fancy, almost entirely regardless of the kind of aircraft you are piloting. Another mechanic is a kind of max pain bullet time to help you take down enemies. This creates a blur that we would imagine is focused on your target, but in actual fact you simply can't see anything, apart from the little red dot that tells you where to aim ahead of your target. This means you lose any sense of height and can often find yourself in some sort of spiraling front loop into the ground. Talking of the ground, we should mention the graphics at this point. They are not good. It could be swapped with any PC combat flight demo from around five years ago, and you wouldn't notice any difference. The environments are flat and pixelated, while the plane models are dull and lifeless. The cockpits are faithfully recreated, but there is just no style present at all. The low production values of the game are what really make you think Mad Cats produce the game purely to sell their joystick. This means you are constantly playing with the feeling that you're playing an unfinished game, and considering the price tag that comes with getting the joystick package, you would certainly want more bang for your buck. The joystick itself is actually pretty cool. It feels sturdy and looks awesome. The switches feel solid and there is a throttle lever on the right, but oddly, it doesn't seem to do much in terms of throttle control in the game. Despite having a lot of travel, you are either full power or no power. This means you'll be told over and over as you come into land that you're traveling too fast or that you're not traveling fast enough. These niggles aside, it's a great bit of kit and worth trying out with other flight sims as well. Damage Inc.'s main multiplayer mode is a four-player split-screen co-op. You can freely join a friend's campaign and complete the missions as a team. Four players on one screen is a bit much, but this is actually quite fun as you begin to quickly think tactically and support each other as you fly through the danger zone. There is online multiplayer too, and once you're playing against human opponents, the few that you can find, there is some fun to be had, mainly due to unrealistic nature of aircraft control, which can lead to some pretty spectacular maneuvers. Overall, Damage Inc. feels like a demo game made solely to sell the joystick. Lackluster graphics and unrealistic flight control, considering this is a game which prides itself on its realism, leaves you constantly feeling like you're playing something unfinished. The joystick, however, is a fun piece of kit which we'd expect from Mad Cats. Maybe they should stick to peripherals.